welcome back for the highly anticipated, very much requested, exciting, easier version of traditional caramel cake. I can't believe that almost 100,000 people have watched the previous video I did about caramel cake, but at the same time, I'm not surprised because when I went looking for a recipe, there weren't any out there. There were no tutorials on how to make it happen. The good news is last December, I found a recipe that is a lot easier to do and more foolproof, I guess I should say, at the, at the end results are more foolproof. One of the things I had trouble with with the previous recipe was when it came to cooling the caramel and getting it to the consistency to go on the cake it was sort of hit or miss. Sometimes it would be fluffy and amazing. Sometimes it would take molding like I did in my last video where I kind of pieced pieces in, depending on the humidity level, depending on how my mixer decided to do. It was one of those things where I was like, there's gotta be an easier way to get the same results. And I'm happy to say that there is. So this video is gonna take you through step by step, um, just like the last video did. Again, I wanna reiterate, the icing is exactly the same. So this isn't a different icing recipe. This isn't a different taste. This isn't a different texture. This is the same kind of icing as the last one. That's that true. traditional grandmother's Southern caramel cake recipe, um, that is the exact same thing that we're about to do. It's the exact same results, but you're gonna see that getting it from Caramel to icing to cake is going to be so much easier. I hope that you'll be able to use this video for your upcoming holiday celebrations. So I'm very excited. Again, I hope that this is something that you will be able to use um, at Thanksgiving, at Christmas, on a random Tuesday when you want a caramel cake, anything like that. So follow along step by step. If you have any questions per usual, please ask. Um, and let's get started. First step, three-fourths of a cup of granulated sugar in a cast iron skillet. I'm using a small one because I like my small one. Three-fourths of a cup, just regular white granulated sugar. You're going to heat this on medium. While this is melting, which takes a minute, we're going to add three cups plus three fourths of a cup of sugar into this pot. We're also going to add two sticks plus one tablespoon of butter. Notice I haven't turned it on quite yet. I'm going to get a couple of these ingredients into the pot before I turn it on. I don't like for this to boil for a long time before this is done. I like to break my butter up into chunks, just melts better, quicker. Like I said, that's two sticks plus one tablespoon of butter. I'm gonna also add one and a half cups of evaporated milk. I'm gonna turn this burner on to about medium, just to start the process. I'm also going to add to this pot one tablespoon plus one and a half teaspoons of flour. So one tablespoon plus one and a half teaspoons, which is about half a tablespoon of flour. This is starting to melt, as you can see. I'm gonna get a fresh spatula. I'm gonna use this spatula for this and then another one for this. So this is starting to melt. I try not to fiddle with it as much as I can. Um, I do want to make sure that it, it is being stirred because I don't want any part of it to be any more melted or I don't want it to get burnt in any spots, but 
I do not want to like meddle with it too much. Okay, so while this is still melting, doing that same thing, I've got this over here melting and I'm gonna bring it to a boil. Now, if you'll see, this one is starting to do exactly what it should do. Again, I'm gonna come over here. I'm actually gonna turn the heat down a little bit. Now that I have a gas stove, it doesn't qu require quite as high heat. Um, so this one is down, I've got it down to about three right now, just because I'd rather it slowly do this than do it too quickly and burn. Okay, so see how all that's kind of crystallizing. I like to try to keep it even if I can. Just let that do its thing. I've got it down, like I said, I've got it on about medium low. I'm gonna come back over here. I'm actually gonna turn this one up a little because we need this to start boiling. Once this starts to boil, I'm gonna turn this up a little bit, make sure we get it all good and melted. And the next step is to pour this into this. So have your hot pad ready so you can get your cast iron skillet off the burner without burning your hand. And then you'll notice that when I pour this into there, I'm actually going to even wear a heat protective glove on my right hand because it can splatter and it is very hot, and if you've ever been burned by caramel before, you know that you never wanna do it again. So all of the precautions are helpful. If you don't have a heat protective glove, you can wrap a dish towel around your hand, just anything to protect your skin is that you're gonna be glad you did because when this hits this, it bubbles up and sometimes spews out. Um, little bits like if you were frying chicken or anything like that. It can be very painful All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put on my heat protective glove I'm going to grab the Skillet with one hand and then I'm going to pour this in. Now, I'm gonna keep wearing this glove because this is where it splatters. I'm going to stir that browned sugar mixture into the boiling mixture. I'm going to come and I'm going to turn this down to about four. That feels comfortable to me. Feels pretty incorporated. Just incorporate that until it's sort of a nice uh, light caramel color. Those are the bubbles I was talking about that will burn the fire out of you. So I'm going to leave this glove on. <laughs> um, Scrape all that good caramel off so it can melt in this pot. I don't want to waste any of that good stuff. All right, now with my protected hand, I am going to stick my thermometer down into my pot. Now we want this pot to get to softball stage, which is 232 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna keep an eye on it for the time. We'll see how long it takes. We're up to 180 now. If I'm being honest, one of the most frustrating things is that it gets to about 200 and 20 degrees and sort of stalls out 
it's almost in inevitable and I don't know exactly why it does it but it is a little frustrating but we'll keep an eye on it I have been known to pull it a little sooner than 232 just because it would stall out for so long um, I'm not gonna stir it a lot but I do want to make sure that nothing is sticking to the bottom of my pan make sure all of that like I said is getting good and melted in there one time I let it sit too long without stirring it and it did scorch it so you just want to be careful about that you always anything that contains any form of milk you want to make sure that it's not getting scorched so I'll be honest while this is boiling I'm gonna get my cake layers ready so that they're ready once the icing is done so you can do the same thing it's okay to walk away from it for a minute as long as you're not going away for a long time we're about to hit that point to where it stalls out it's at about 218 degrees right now and it'll take a few more minutes for it to get to 232 so feel free to do whatever you need to do during this time to prep for the next couple of stages Okay, we've reached the 220 mark which is like I said this is the part where it feels like the never-ending story I'm gonna stir it again just to make sure nothing is sticking and my prep is ready for the next phase of this so because of that I'm going to bump up the heat just a tiny bit I don't you don't want to rush it but if you can help it to get to that softball stage then by all means help it get there one thing I can't stress enough is preparation for any recipe anytime you're doing any sort of cooking or baking I cannot express to you how important it is to read your recipe in its entirety beforehand and have things ready and at your disposal because especially when you're working with something like caramel it can go bad so quickly that you need to make sure that all of your elements are as close as possible so that the next step is ready and then the next step and the next step because this isn't one of those things that you can just leave around and be like oh I gotta I need to run in here and do this for five minutes and then I'll just come back and finish it like this is something that once you get started you can't really stop that's looking beautiful those bubbles and all of this are really really looking great and it smells great it's definitely not been over brown it's definitely not burnt I can tell by the way it's sticking to the thermometer that it's the right consistency so this is great but again we have stalled out at 120 degrees we maybe are up to um, 122 now if you have a, a, a candy thermometer like this one which I highly highly recommend I believe I linked one in my old video I'll link this one or one similar below as well because they're like eight bucks they don't cost hardly anything but they are almost detrimental to this recipe because well they are detrimental my grandmother did it by taking a glob of the icing and putting it in a glass of water and if it was a soft ball once it hit the water then it was ready but I assure you unless you just really feel strongly about doing that this is the best way to do it and it's worth the eight bucks from Walmart or Amazon or wherever but what I was gonna say is on here it gives you these different like thread softball hardball soft crack hard crack because those are for all the different kinds of candies I've been known to pull this off at thread before because I just got so frustrated with how long it was taking but this one I feel like is moving along better this is also the first time I've made it on my gas stove so it could have something to do with the temperature regulation just being more consistent 
a more consistent flame as opposed to electric which kind of goes up and down depending on um, the temperature you have it set to. I want to remind y'all that I'm just like y'all. I buy my stuff at Walmart. I live in a really small town. Like I don't have any sort of luxury that y'all don't have to be able to do any of this. So this is just us in the kitchen um, doing this together, experimenting and learning. And it's actually just extremely fun. Okay, so I'm about two degrees, if not one, away from softball. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of the heat and I'm going to remove the therm a thermometer um, over the sink and I'm gonna get set up for the next step. Okay, so I've just moved everything over. If you have normal countertops, then you'll want to put this on a, a hot pad. I happen to have concrete countertops, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to add one tablespoon what, plus one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. It's gonna bubble. Okay, didn't bubble, that's all right. And now we're going to start whipping. We are going to actually take a hand mixer with the whisk attachment and just start whisking. This is gonna be done to the hot caramel. You do not let it cool. You start immediately. And that's where this differs from the other recipe is that you're just already incorporating air immediately. Now, does this take a minute? Yes, it takes a minute. But it already looks amazing. You just gotta make sure that you get it to a pourable, but not runny consistency. You don't want it to be completely thick. You want it to be just this really cool pourable consistency. You can pull your, see how that's just a little too runny? You can take your whisk and kind of see, it's just a little, still just too runny. The color is great, the consistency is fantastic, but it's just not quite where it needs to be to be able to ice the cake yet. It's starting to get a little harder to mix, which means that it's slowly getting to the consistency that you want it to be. We'll check it again. Um, still a little runny. You'll see that you can start to see the um, whisk marks, if you will, which means that it's holding its shape really well even as you're mixing it. So we're almost there. We're getting close. It's really starting to show a lot of resistance to the whisk. So I feel like we're really almost there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off or stop whisking it because I don't wanna whisk it too much. And I need to, I'm gonna do this. I've never done this, but I'm gonna do this really quick. I'm gonna tell you what the temperature is of the mixture after we whisked it to see if that might help anybody. Okay, so the caramel after whisking is about 170 degrees. Hopefully that'll be helpful. That is, I wanna eat that right now. Okay, so we're gonna give it a good stir. It's definitely at the consistency that it needs to be, um, which is, is this. I'm gonna put that right there so I can eat that later. And we're gonna get to work really quickly. Okay, we're gonna dollop out icing on this top layer of cake here. Look at that, that's the perfect consistency. Like I said, it was about 170 degrees. If people, if you'd rather know that, that can be very helpful, but that is the perfect consistency. Like I haven't made this in months, so this isn't something I do on a daily basis that I've just gotten right. 
a thousand times. Like I'm in this with you. Okay, so first layer of cake. And I'm working quickly because one of the most important things for me is that the top of the cake be pretty, which means the icing needs to be about this temperature. I can always work with the sides if I need to, um, but I want the top to be beautiful like this. And I wanna add as much icing as possible, but I also don't want to add so much that it becomes unstable. And our top layer will go on, we'll flatten it down to even. We'll put our top layer on. I think we've got enough on the top to be able to consider it beautiful, just like so. And then we're gonna work on the sides. And I've just been using, you've seen that I've just been using my spatula for this whole thing. I will use my icing knife here in just a minute to work out um, but I've just found that silicone works really well with this because it doesn't stick to it it allows for a really smooth finish once the icing starts to cool it's time to kind of call it quits um, You're gonna to wanna to let it set. And once it does that, you can come back in with a hot palette knife and ease your way around um, and smooth it out. I'll show you what that looks like. I have got this metal palette knife in hot water. I don't want it to be wet, I want it to be warm. And I am just going to run it along the sides. In the previous video I did, we did this, but it was to keep the icing like on the cake. This is just for aesthetics. This has nothing to do with the integrity of the cake. All right, so well, there you go. That's the finished product. Um, it's still pretty warm, so I'm gonna let it probably cool in the refrigerator. You never want it to go from extremely hot to extremely cool. It'll just kind of mess with it, but I believe it's warm enough or cool. It's cooled enough that I can put it in the refrigerator and let it um, refrigerate the rest of the way. You can see that you really can kind of grab it. It's one of those things to where this icing is so thick and has coated it so well that you can kind of manipulate it however you want to, but it can be done. You saw that we avoided the splitting process. Um, if you've made caramel icing before, you know that the most frustrating thing is getting all of the elements cooked. And then when you go to whip your icing to actually make the icing, it splits and the butter rises to the top. There's nothing more frustrating than that. And it has happened to me multiple times and I've had to start over. So with this method, that never happens. And it really was a shorter method as well. It didn't take as long as the other one because there was no waiting for the initial cooked caramel to cool off. You'd go immediately from cooking to whipping and you cut out a step. So 
I hope all of you will try this recipe. I hope you will let me know how it goes. I hope those of you who have tried the other one will try this one and let me know which one you like the best. Everybody um, is entitled to their favorite way. The other way may work best for other people, which is why I think it's great that there are two methods to get the same results. So enjoy make this for your family send me pictures if you do make it for your family i'm crystal jenkins bakes on facebook and instagram and i would love to see how your creations turn out thank you